the history and topography of Ireland. After Gerald of Wales. Here begins the first part of the history of Ireland. Part 1. The position of Ireland. Ireland, the largest island beyond Britain, is situated in the Western Ocean about one short day's sailing from Wales. But between Ulster and Galloway in Scotland, the sea narrows to half of that distance. However, on a rare clear day, it is possible to see a clear outline of the land. Its distance in space is constituted of more than just that narrow, deep, turbulent sea. From the west coast of Britain, it is possible to set out and coming through the haze and the fog to find this island brooding in a kind of sullen isolation. It is further again from the harsh volcanic isle of Iceland, five days sailing to the north. The island possesses none of that turbulence known to occur in its far northern neighbour, being somewhat placid in its damp seismic spot. For what Iceland is to it, the island is to Spain and Galicia, the island somewhat changes in shape between north and south, bulging towards the south and increasing a little in lumpiness. There are other islands about it, many peppered off the southwest and also dotted sporadically along the western side of the country, places like Bear and Clare and the Blaskets. And there is a shark's toot that some people worship far off out south called Skellig. The island stretches an eight-day horse ride from Kerry through rocky regions and across the soft lands and underpopulated peatlands towards Donegal, a region of dubiously chirpy language. It is not a mountainous island, barring a few exceptions, and consists mostly of grassland with few trees. In all aspects, the primary quality is wetness, starting out at the drier edges and settling into wet, wide plains in the middle. To the west, there is a great open ocean, a kind of empty geographical void which the island leaks all of its energy into. This westerly chasm is the chief geographical influence on the temper of the island. It turns its rocky face towards that open space and broiling desert of ocean. All softness and areas of peace and tranquility in the island hold a memory of this westerly chasm giving the island an air of never quite being at rest and of clinging on to its thoughtful spaces in the face of a great chaotic openness. Most trees along this sharp, jagged island's edge are bent in the face of it. Sea-facing mountains are scorched from the winds that roll off it and the precarity of the island is spatial first and only psychological after, but more on that anon. All in all, it is about half the length of its near neighbour Britain. Perhaps the shape of the island seems as if it has its back to Britain. And although much of the population is concentrated on the easterly side, the physical characteristics of geography, topography and geology of the island are barer and more visible on the west. Much of the interior is pleasant and readily accessible by road. In general, the population underestimates how far north they are in the globe. And there is much talk of the continental mass of Europa, if little understanding of it. Britain, from north to south, is about 800 miles long. The island is half of this. Although it is similar in width, about 400 miles across, giving the island a more rotund shape, Britain being narrower and somewhat more tubular. You have been listening to the history and topography of Ireland. Enjoy your day.